Good morning, and welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church this Sunday morning. We'll be joined in our pulpit this morning by the Reverend Matthias Aki, who worships at Glen Echo Presbyterian Church and assists in preaching once a month. Additionally, he assists at Lana North Presbyterian Church via Zoom as virtual su pulpit supply pastor. Reverend Aki is originally from the Cameroon and was ordained into the Ministry of Word and Sacraments 15 years ago in the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon. He and his family moved to the United States in 2010 and is a member at large of the Presbytery of Scioto Valley. Pastor Matthias' wife, Mercy Aki, joins him this morning along with their four children, other family, and friends. We also want to welcome the Reverend Dr. Jeannie Harsh, Executive Presbyter of the Presbytery of Scioto Valley, who will moderate our congregational meeting immediately following the worship service. The session and Presbytery of Scioto Valley have called a special congregational meeting for the purpose of electing a pastor nominating committee, as well as ratify and approve all motions taken by the congregation during meetings held via video conference or telephonically since March 2020 as well as change the unity bylaws to allow for such meetings. The special congregational meeting will be held today after church in the sanctuary immediately following the worship service. Just a reminder that the Matthew 25 meeting has been rescheduled for Sunday, November 14th after the worship service. Also, the memorial service for Pastor Steve Garstead will be held at 12 noon on Saturday, November 13th at Camp Hill Presbyterian Church in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. More information on that will be forthcoming in the newsletter. Now I'd like Dan, is Dan here? Not, not, wrong Dan, Dan Jacks. Okay, he was supposed to do a minute for mission. Since he's not here, we're gonna go ahead and worship God together. Uh, the opening hymn, hymn is on page eight in your bulletin.
Please be seated. Join me responsibly in the call to worship. We gather to worship God. Who stretched the heavens like a tent and set the earth on its foundations. We gather to worship God. Who rides the winds like a chariot and wears light as a garment. We gather to worship God. Who suffers for the sake of our lives and offers us life abundant. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. O oh Lord, you have taught us that whoever wishes to become great must be a servant, and whoever seeks to be first must be last and servant of all. Still, O oh Lord, we are like James and John, seeking seats of glory. We organize our lives around ladders to climb not realizing we are stepping on people whom you love. Forgive us, O Christ, and teach us to follow in your way. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. Hear the good news and the assurance of pardon. The love of God is from everlasting to everlasting. Our Lord invites us to repent from our transgressions and learn to live again. Remembering that we are children of the covenant, I assure you, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we are forgiven. Praise be to God. Amen. Please share with each other the, by words and gestures the signs of peace and reconciliation. The peace of Christ be with each of you. And also with you. Peace. 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 Peace.
So Abraham and Sarah, God told them, we want you, I want you to leave your family and your people and go to this place that, I, that I'm going to show you. That takes a lot of trust, right? Yeah, so much trust. Yeah, so what if somebody told you, hey, I want you to leave your family and go to a place like you don't know where you're going. That'd be pretty scary, right? Yeah, I'm saying. Yes, so please don't do that. <laughs> we don't want you to do that. But Abraham did that. Um, and he, see, he followed God, and God said to him, I'll make you a promise, a special kind of promise. And we talked about a special kind of promise last, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It starts with a C. Do you remember what that was? A covenant? So God made a covenant and said, if you go where I, where I want you to go, then I will give you a, a large family. Your descendants will be greater than the stars in the sky and the sand on, in the sea. Can you count the sand on the seashore? No. No. I can. You can. <laughs> it would take a super long time, and I don't know that you'd ever, ever get done, right? It takes like 100,000 years. It might take 100,000 years. Five. So Abraham followed Seven. God. 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 <laughs> God fulfilled his promise to Abraham, but Abraham had to wait for a really, really long time. Abraham was 75 when he started this whole thing. And God promised to have him to have a huge family, and he didn't have any, any kids at that point. So it's hard, it's hard to wait sometimes, right? Yeah, he had to wait like a couple, some big years. Yeah, he had to wait a lot of years. And sometimes we lose patience when we wait, right? Yeah. Yep. So, but Abraham trusted God, and even though he lost patience, he still trusted God, and God fulfilled his promise. All right. Let's do an echo prayer. Can All you right. bow your heads and close your eyes, please? Dear Lord, we thank you for keeping your promises. Thank you for keeping your promises. And for knowing what's best for us. And for knowing what's best for us. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, let's go back to Sunday school.
Testament. Sorry. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 through 12. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By that perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see the light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will lot a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear now the words from the 91st Psalm, verses 9 through 16. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God, who is and who was and who is to come. Amen. The text for reflection this Sunday morning comes to us from the Gospel of Mark in the 10th chapter, beginning at the 35th verse. Mark chapter 10, the verses 35 to 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. 
and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be saved, but to save, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we attempt in faith to listen to your reassuring word, give us wisdom to know you, insight to understand you, eagerness to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to see you, hearts to receive you, and lives to proclaim you in the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear Christian friends, this morning I presume we have gone through or are still going through some processes of determination. We were determined to wake up this morning and get ready for this worship service. We were determined to drive to church and to take our seats. Now what? We are determined to listen in order to derive determination to serve. Before this takes place, I am determined to beg for your permission to say thank you. Thank you for inviting my family and I to join you in this solemn worship service. And thank you all for your warm affection and undivided attention to follow me in reflecting on the team, the determination to save. Mark, the gospel writer, tells us that Jesus and his disciples were traveling to Jerusalem. He had predicted his death thrice and had encountered his opponents, the Pharisees, in many occasions. He had contrasted his teachings with them substantially. Why the Pharisees believed they were great leaders. Jesus on his own part shows his disciples that a great leader is one who saves even to the point of death. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian, expands on Jesus' phrase even to the point of death when he said, to endure the cross is not tragedy. It is the suffering which is the fruit of an exclusive allegiance to Jesus Christ. The desire to be in ruling positions or high places of honor hindered the two brothers, James and John, to capture the true meaning of service in the kingdom of God. 
a favorable time came when Jesus was with the two sons of Salome, the mother of James and John. He used that chance to teach about service in response to their insensitive question. In the teaching process, Jesus pointed to himself as the example of one who serves. And this was very astonishing to them because they were seeking places of honor in the kingdom of God. He taught them that the greater a person is, the greater his or her service will be. Bringing it to context, Jesus says the person who gives more is the one who saves. The person who gives more love, more care, more justice, and more charitable acts is the greatest. Himself, as an example, the disciples had seen him shown compassion to a crowd of people who were being harassed like a sheep without a shepherd. They had seen him touch the unclean. They had seen him heal the sick. And they had seen him fed thousands. Before it was over, they would see him stoop down to wash their own feet as a sign of humility and service. Jesus' leadership style is the reverse of human leadership. It challenges believers to choose the kind of leader they want to invest their determination to save. Now the choice is ours. Who are we determined to invest to save in this world? Are we determined to save the world which represents human leadership? Or we are determined to save Jesus Christ who represents servant leadership. In the former, the world says rule people, and this is common in people with high achievements. It is common with organizations, businesses, and institutions. Some of the people who fall in these categories tend to think that the greater a person's achievements are, the more servants he or she will have. A typical case would be someone who has nannies or mates or, or drivers or cooks and numerous employees. Sometime when it is time for worship, these people will leave those who, who save them back at home with heavy assignments that they should not be able to come to church and they deprive them of worship. David, in Psalms 2, the verses 10 to 11, counter this kind of leadership style when he cautions, now listen to this warning, you kings. Learn this lesson, you rulers of the world. Serve the Lord with fear. The kings of old and our contemporary kings or the powers that be are summoned to serve the Lord with fear. In the latter, Jesus says, serve other people. Luke 1, 74 compliments that followers of Jesus are to save the Lord without fear. Imaginatively, James and John might have been shocked when they came to understand Jesus' conception of greatness. 
Jeremiah reply in verse 39, we are able proves their commitment to the cause of the gospel. Mark had a long-standing disagreement with Paul, as we might have read in Timothy, and they parted company for a long time, about a period of 11 years. But the determination to save one another brought them again into fellowship. Their fractured relationship was healed, such that Paul says that Mark and others are the only ones of the circumcision, the Jews, among my co-workers for the kingdom of God. Again, Paul, in his last epistle, in 2 Timothy 4, 9 to 11, pays Mark his final tribute. He tells Timothy, do your best to come to me soon. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in ministry. It was Mark who provided the main meeting place of worship in Jerusalem. We are all useful in the various ministries that God had called us to save. There is no reason to seek for high places or places of honor or part company for any reason. The determination to save should come from the fact that there is greatness in service and that no service is too small. The services that we render to each other is never too small. Our time together this morning, sharing this fellowship, is never too small. John Michael Tabot argues for the fact that no service is too small when he said, one of the most revealing snapshots of Francis of Assisi approach towards servant leadership is found in one brief statement in the legend of Parugia that is easy to miss amid all the accounts of the saints' wonderful deeds. But there it was, hidden in a description of Francis' practice of traveling and preaching in the churches. What was it? He brought along a broom to clean the churches. He brought along a broom to clean the churches. For about two years now and counting, we are in crisis, resulting both from natural and man-made crisis. How can we achieve greatness in service in such a time like this? How can we save the Lord without fear? Do we bring along a broom to sweep away COVID-19 and the new variant once and for all? With God, this is possible. COVID-19 will certainly come to pass. But what about the perennial pandemics of inequality among us? Gender inequality, racial inequality, income inequality. Without equity, dear friends in Christ, we can move forward in building a more fairer, a more inclusive, and a more sustainable community. Could stepping out of our comfort zones and self silence be an alternative? Could being courageous and bold enough to speak up clearly against the ills of our time be an alternative? Could waiting longer in prayer for strength 
from above to save whenever conditions may arise be an alternative? Could the willingness to suffer the irritations that come with serving others be an alternative? Or could creating a better community of faith which daily reflects God's unity in diversity be an alternative? These are questions in which we have to ponder and see to it that we get a way forward how we can build stronger relationships with one another. It seems fruitful and hopeful results awaits us when we consider offering ourselves as living sacrifices to God, spending time reflecting on what we need to change in our own lives and in our own communities. As the whole world came to a standstill due to COVID-19, Jem Rohn had this to say, whoever renders service to many put himself in line for greatness. When we look into the world and see areas where we can support in rendering service, we are putting ourselves in the line of greatness. May it be said about us in our presbytery, in this congregation, and in Ohio and beyond. When we empty ourselves in serving others, we become closer to Jesus Christ, our great servant leader. When the disciples were asking questions and were being worried about how they would be able to live on after Jesus' departure, they were asking about greatness. So Jesus, in Luke chapter 27, verse 22c, he says, I am among you as one who serves. Dear friends, in conclusion, I leave you with Peter's charge for the flock of God as we look forward to putting in place pastor's nomination committee. Peter declares, I appeal to you, be shepherds of the flock that God gave you, and to take care of it willingly. Do your work not for mere pay, but from a real desire to save. Do not try to rule over those who have been placed in your care, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the glorious crown which will never lose its brightness. Amen.
As we go into the session of prayers, I wish to find out is there or are there prayer requests that we need to leave them up to God? Thank you. Let us go to God. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for reminding us through your word this morning that the greatest must save. Help us look at things from your standpoint of view rather than from the world's perspective. Help us to seek out ways persistently to save others and to place ourselves at your command. At this time, O oh Lord, we lift up ourselves to you as we give thanks and praises for our faith in these very unusual times. And we pray for all who struggle in the work of the gospel, for all who preach your word and administer the sacraments. We pray for your church in this land and other nations that you may grant us gentleness and graciousness in our mission and outreach. We pray for those who have been kidnapped because of serving you in difficult areas. We remember those who work in the Center for Disease Control all those who work in healthcare institution, that even our sister who collapse may be taken care of as she stays in the hospital. We pray for all those who work among the oppressed, the outcast, and the neglected by your power and your presence. Provide us with peace. We pray for all troubled areas of your world that conflicts and wars may cease and that we may find a lasting peace. We pray for peacemakers of your world and we remember all those who have suffered through war, all who have been injured, all who have been displaced from their own homes, or who have lost loved ones. We remember those whose marriages are unstable and those whose memories are scared by violence. By your inbreaking presence, provide us with peace and concord. We pray that our homes may be places of peace and healing and restoration of broken re relationships. We pray for reconciliation and healing where people are divided. We pray for the pastor's nom nomination committee for this congregation 
and for the future of the Unity Presbyterian Church. We lift up our sisters and our brothers whose names have been mentioned as they go through various challenges in life. As we pray for them, O oh Lord, may you intervene in their challenges. We give thanks for all who have passed through death and are at peace in your nearer presence. We pray for friends, colleagues, and family members departed from us, especially those whom we now name in our silent prayers. May we with them share in the peace of your everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom of God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trust. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, as we look forward into the week ahead of us, 
let us be determined to serve the Lord with joy. Let us be determined to know that it pays to serve one another. Go in peace and serve the Lord. The peace of Christ which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, keep, and preserve us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Peace be with you.